Good afternoon. Today I would like to have a short presentation about my one year progress in the program. I am Beatrix Fogarashi and I work as a psychologist at the Division of Pancreatic Diseases at Samarweis University. During the program, I have three projects, all of them assessing various psychological interventions in healthcare system, especially in gastroenterology. My first project is a systematic review and meta-analysis on the topic of uh, uh, the effectiveness of psychological interventions in digestive system diseases. We know that psychological stress can have a negative effect on uh, gastrointestinal function, but we also know that there are psychological interventions that can have beneficial effect on the patient's status in various diseases. But most importantly, we do not have any evidence-based protocol for these interventions for inflammatory digestive system diseases. Therefore, my aim is to evaluate the efficacy of these interventions uh, for this subpopulation. Um, based on the PICO framework, the investigated population is patients receiving standard of care with uh, various inflammatory digestive system diseases, and we compared uh, uh, psychological interventions with no intervention, standard of care, or placebo. Uh, we assessed various outcomes related to mental health and also disease-related outcomes, which I will talk about later in more detail. According to my hypothesis, psychological interventions can have beneficial effects uh, on patients with these diseases. Here you can see the systematic search and the selection. With, uh, with this search key, we found over 13,000 articles, and after the selection process, we ended up with 66 uh, eligible full texts. Here you can see the structure of the outcomes. Based on the follow-up time or the time of the measurements, we have four categories. Post-intervention one means that the outcome was measured right after the intervention ended. And in the follow-up category, we have three subcategories based on short-term, mid-term, or long-term effect, meaning that how many months passed after the intervention. We also can categorize our outcomes um, if they are mental health related outcomes or disease related ones. Mental health related outcomes as depression, anxiety, quality of life, stress, fear or self-efficacy and disease related ones as disease activity index for IBD, CRP, pain, fatigue, relapse rate uh, or physical quality of life. Due to the lack of time, I can only show two plots for for the two categories. First, mental health. Here you can see the anxiety outcome, and you can also see the time of the measurement subgroups. Based on our results, psychological intervention managed to decrease the anxiety statistically um, compared to the control group. Here you can see the SMD interpretation, meaning that we have a medium effect. We, also can, we can also find the beneficial effect, the same beneficial effect in mental health category for depression, quality of life, and perceived stress at the post-intervention measurement. For the disease-related outcomes, here you can see pain. Unfortunately, we have uh, significantly less data on disease-related outcomes in these articles. Therefore, we couldn't find significant effects. All in all, we can say that um, we have significant results at the post-intervention measurements, and we saw that at the short-term follow-up, the effect was lost. So after three months, we couldn't uh, find significant effects on mental health or disease-related outcomes. We also did in, uh, intervention subgroups based on the type of the intervention, since cognitive behavior therapy is one of the uh, evidence-based methods in psychology. We did subgroups uh, based on the fact if the article used cognitive behavior therapy techni techniques or not. Here you can see that um, cognitive behavior therapy techniques uh, can significantly decrease depression and uh, compared to the control group, and we can also see the same beneficial effect for quality of life. It can increase quality of life. We carried out two meta-regressions, and based on our results, the duration of the intervention and duration of the follow-up time uh, did not have an impact 
on uh, anxiety, depression, uh, or quality of life. We are also planning to do disease subgroups. The analysis is uh, undergoing an ongoing analysis. As a summary, we can say that we have a comprehensive overview with the highest level of evidence due to the RCTs and the high number of studies and patients. But of course, we have limitations as uh, we have limited number of studies within the subgroups and we have a very heterogeneous population, diseases, scales, and time measurements. We also have to emphasize that we have a small numbers of articles for certain outcomes I mentioned before. As a conclusion, we can say that psychological interventions, especially cognitive behavior techniques, are effective in short-term improvement for mental health of patients with inflammatory digestive system diseases. As an implication for practice, um, we recommend that psychological interventions with a well-established protocol should be implemented to clinical practice in every gastroenterology ward. And uh, for research, we recommend that we have to standardize the scales and measurements in psychology, and we, we should identify the most effective form of intervention and investigate the effect of repeated interventions with longer uh, period of uh, follow-up time. Here you can see the status of my manuscript. And my second project is another systematic review and meta-analysis on the topic of uh, um, alcohol and nicotine consumption and cessation programs. We know that there is a strong association between smoking and alcohol consumption, and we also know that the cessation outcomes for people who are addicted to both substances are generally worse than those who are only addicted to one of them. And most importantly, there is a lack of uh, evidence-based intervention for this uh, population. Therefore, my aim is to evaluate the effectiveness and safety of these interventions uh, for concurrent alcohol and nicotine consumption. The investigative population is adults with concurrent harmful alcohol consumption and nicotine dependence, and we compare pharmacological, non-pharmacological, and combined interventions. Um, the main outcomes are tobacco, alcohol consumption, relapse rate, and hospital admission. According to our hypothesis, the combined uh, non-pharmacological and pharmacological interventions are the most beneficial uh, for this population. And as the third project, I got the opportunity to take part in an international multicenter randomized control trial on the topic of recurrent acute pancreatitis prevention by elimination of alcohol and cigarette smoking called the reappear study. Here you can see on the flowchart that we include patients hospitalized for alcohol-induced acute pancreatitis, and after the randomization, it is a two-arm study with 200 uh, patients uh, on both arms. After the enrollment, both um, groups receive brief intervention, and after that, the intervention group continue receiving them in every three months, while the control group uh, only have a one year visit without the intervention and the close up out is at two years and we also collect hair, urine and blood samples. Uh, currently, uh, my task in the trial is to perform the interventions and to coordinate the patient's involvement. At the ward at the Samarvais University we have 26 so far. So all in all, my aim to provide bigger recognition and to prove the importance of psychology in healthcare system, especially in gastroenterology. Thank you for your attention. At uh, the conclusion of your first uh, uh, topic, you mentioned that uh, uh, especially the cognitive behavior therapy is uh, effective, but I don't remember if you mentioned it before, or I'm sure you didn't have time, I'm just asking, so you sure have data on, on that as well? Yes, we did the subgroup analysis, and compared to any other interventions, uh, we did the cognitive behavior therapy techniques, and we got significant results for depression and quality of life also. I have a question regarding the population of the, of the study. That do you have uh, also data for children and for adults too, or only adults? Or what was yes, we included children and adults as well. But unfortunately, we, we have very heterogeneous population in the articles. Uh, they didn't divide the children and the adult population, so we didn't uh, 
manage to do the subgroup analysis based on them. So there are articles where uh, the population is from 10 years to 60, so it was not, um, we, we couldn't do it, unfortunately. I would like to ask you regarding the reappear study. Mm -hmm. um, how many patients have you enrolled so far and what is your experience with them coming back for the follow-up visits? Uh, so far we have 26 patients uh, for both arms, I mean together with, on the uh, two arms. And um, from the five patients who, who, who would have so far the follow-up visit, we had two follow-up interventions. So we can already see that it's not easy to, to call back them for another intervention. But we are trying. Um, in the reappear study, you call them back every three months, right? And um, I'm not a psychologist, as you know, but uh, is it enough to see a patient every three months? Is it effective? Mm, well, we had a pilot study for reappear, and uh, this was the recommendation of the patients that they feel that they need to uh, come back in every three months. They, due to work or any other life events, they couldn't do it in more frequently, but the three months they can handle. And uh, basically, my first project shows that three months can work because the eff effect was lost after three months. So basically, yes, I think.